Okay guys, today's video, the driver, how we can hit it further without going faster. So listen to that again. We want to hit the ball further without going faster. Now, if you watch the Open this week on television, obviously this video might come out a few weeks after the Open, you will notice how beautifully balanced most of these guys swing it and yet they hit it absolutely miles. What we're looking for is efficiency with the driver, how we can hit it in the right spot in the driver as regards sweet spot, how we can hit up. Now hitting up versus hitting down makes a huge difference on distance as long as we don't increase that dynamic loft. So we're looking to smash this driver as far as you can without going to the gym, without swinging faster, but basically being as efficient as we can. Keep watching to learn how to do it with some simple exercises, practice tips to make a real difference. So what we're looking at is a little T-peg station. Now the T-peg I've got pretty tight to the heel and toe of the club. So basically we want to avoid them, use it as a bit of a gate. That will guarantee that we hit the ball in the centre. Now obviously if I'm crashing these ones out all the time I'm going to hit it in the heel. If I'm crashing these ones out all the time I'm going to hit it in the toe. If I was hitting these ones all the time the objective would be to try and hit the outer T-pegs to make a change or even I could just remove the inner T pegs and try and again hit the outer ones and get these out of the equation. Or I could put these in a fraction tighter, there's not much more room, but try and again avoid them. And again, do practice swings, try and avoid them. The last T peg here is for angle of attack. And you notice here, it's one club head width in front of the golf ball, and I've got it teed down, so it's probably about an inch out of the ground. With the idea being that I need to try and hit the golf ball and ascend over that tee peg to get me hitting up on the ball. That is what we're looking to do. As I said earlier, at 90 mile an hour, if you hit three degrees up versus three degrees down, you'll hit it about 15% longer. So that's quite a bit of difference. So if you're hitting the ball off center and hitting down on the ball, and you go from hitting it center to hitting up on the ball, we're probably talking 20, 30% more distance. So at 200 yards, that's 60 more yards distance without increasing your speed. Now, every mile an hour club head speed is roughly equivalent for two and a half yards, three yards. Every mile an hour ball speed is about two yards. So if we've got plenty of club head speed, but we're not getting that efficiency, and what we look for with the driver is a maximum of 1.5, what we call smash factor, that's the legal limit. We're looking to get high 140s. So if your smash factor, if you get tested on a launch monitor, isn't high 140s, then we definitely can improve the contact and the angle of approach. The last thing to consider within this is what we call spin loft. Spin loft basically is the difference between the angle of attack and the dynamic loft. So basically we want to hit up on the ball while almost de-lofting the club. We're almost feeling that like the top part of the club climbs on top of the lower half of the club so that we get that spin loft reduced. The first priority for this video is to try and get the contact perfect by not hitting it toe or heel and hitting up on the ball. So I'm going to go ahead and hit one now and we're going to try and obviously miss the tee pegs and miss the exit tee peg to hit up on the ball and hopefully get a nice result. Let's see what we get. Very happy with the result, straight for me. You'll notice there I haven't disturbed the T-peg station at all, which is exactly what we're looking to see. Even if I had disturbed it, it'd be all about feedback. So feedback is vital. So not disturbing it is a good sign, as long as I'm happy with the outcome. If I would not disturbed anything and the outcome was poor, then there'd be something else going on that we need to look at and address. But without using video cameras, without consulting a pro, stick these T pegs down. You'll see from the video footage, I've got some on top footage, you can see the distance away I've got them. But basically I'm giving myself a few centimeters either side of the club head before and during that impact zone. And I've got a club head before I put that T peg and that T peg is pushed down. I would probably say it's about half an inch coming out of the ground. Again, you can make that harder, you can make it slightly easier. I would start then if you miss it all the time and we're happy with the ball flight, then great. 
If not, then we'd start to push the TPEG a little higher out of the ground to see what we can do to change. So remember, it's not necessary about swinging faster. If we move well, we will generate more speed, more torque, more natural forces. We want that. But we're on about being as efficient as we can initially, then potentially adding speed when you feel comfortable and if you're able to do that. So move well, be efficient. Those are the keys to hitting the ball longer, 